thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. I published a video about a week or so ago about vertical antennas and it got a tremendous response. Um, a lot of messages, a lot of texts, emails and so forth. And uh, by and large I think uh, it created an awful lot of interest because what I highlighted or tried to highlight was the fact that I personally felt that there was a better way of installing a vertical antenna than uh, mounting it on the ground. And this has been borne out by various um, comments uh, over the years and people have tried uh, the difference between mounting a vertical on the ground and mounting it above the ground in an elevated position. And I've tried it myself. There is a very beneficial um, result of raising the antenna from the ground. A vertical antenna mounted on the ground does work. You know, don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't tell me it doesn't work. I know it works because I've used it many, many times, a vertical on the ground. In fact, I've got one on the ground at the moment and it works, but it doesn't work nearly as well as it could do if it was raised above the ground. And if you go back to through some of the old radcoms, almost all the articles relating to vertical antennas, whether they were reviews or pictures of stations using vertical antennas, they all used what was commonly known then as a ground plane. Basically, the vertical was raised above the ground by various levels and it had several wires which were ground planes or radials, you might call them the same, same thing. And that was the standard way of installing a vertical antenna. And the only time you installed an antenna on the ground was if it was too big, like a vertical, say, for 80 metres or 160 metres, gracious me, um, or maybe even 40 metres in some cases. Um, if it was small enough, you would raise it in the air. And, of course, trap verticals, there's a, there's a Hustler 4B TV, a very famous antenna. It's probably the most popular vertical antenna ever if you go back over the years because when I was first licensed it it existed and that was 60 years ago. The 4B TV covers uh, the um, standard bands as they were then uh, 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters and because it's trapped it tends to be shorter than a full size because as you as you put traps on a vertical antenna so you also load it so you make it physically shorter than it would otherwise be if it was full size and so a 4B TV typically is around about, what, 7 metres tall. So it's not too much of a problem to put it on top of a pole, say, 10, 10 foot, 3 metres high. And one or two people say, well, what is the right height? Well, there isn't exactly a right height. If you can get that vertical off the ground by, say, a metre, 1.5 metres, 2 metres, and use radials, you will find two things. First of all, it will work better, and secondly, you don't need that many radials. I mean, there's a rule of thumb, they, su they say two radials per band. And there's a very interesting article written by Step IR, where they claim that two radials above the ground is as good as many, many radials on the ground. Now, I'm not quite sure whether that is absolutely true, but it certainly goes along with the theory that if you have the vertical off the ground, you certainly don't need so many radials. So I thought what I'd do now is to sort of give you an, a sort of an engineering concept. I'm not an engineer, but give you sort of an engineering guide that if you want to make your own or try to make your own, what you might do, and you could probably do it at a, a reasonable cost. So here's my guide <laughs> on one way, there's plenty of other ways, on one way, of making a home-built vertical that is above ground and should give you much improved performance. First of all, if we look on the screen here, this is a very rough and ready sketch I did of a ground plane antenna. And you can see, uh, or at least the intention was that you could see that it is above ground. 
Uh, ideally, those radial legs should go down at 45 degrees, and the re reason they should go down at 45 degrees is that apparently gives you about a 50 ohm impedance. It doesn't matter whether they go down at 45 degrees, 30 degrees, or whatever. You don't want it too steep, but I would say that if it's if it's 25, 30, 40, 45 degrees, it really doesn't make make a heap of the difference. Um, the effect is right. So that is what you aim for, you're aiming for. You're aiming for a quarter wave vertical antenna that is above the ground. Now one of the cheapest and most effective ways of making a vertical antenna is to use one of the telescopic fiberglass poles. I mean there's a wide choice but what I would suggest is that you buy yourself a decent one. There are some cheap ones about with various names on but the ones that we sell and in fact the only ones we sell are the spider poles which are made in Germany. They are much thicker and more heavy duty than any other pole that you're likely to see. So they will last. The problem is you, you get a fiberglass pole and it seems to work okay and it will last for a couple of years and then the sun gets to it etc etc and it starts to crack and you get some problems and you throw it away and you buy yourself another one knowing jolly well that in two years time you're gonna have the same problem. So it, it makes sense to buy yourself a decent one. We stock the spider poles, they're very, very good, and there's a number of reviews on YouTube, well, they all sort of agree that it's a, it's, a, it's a nice, rugged pole. There are various sizes. You don't need a, a, a huge one, um, and the choice of what length you get really is up to you. Uh, the spider pole do do a short one now, I think it's about seven metres, so would that uh, you could just about squeeze that in. If we, if we, well, let, let, me, let me explain. Um, I think if you're going to make a, um, a so-called DX antenna, a vertical antenna or ground plane, probably you want to concentrate on the higher bands, 20, 18, or 17 rather, 20 metres, 17 metres, 15 metres, 12 metres and 10 metres, simply because they are a reasonable size. 40 metres, there are two problems. First of all, it's quite tall. It's 10 metres tall, and secondly, if you watch my previous video, 40 metres is not a particularly good band to operate a vertical on for normal run-of-the-mill QSOs because it has low angle radiation, and a lot of the QSOs on the 40 metre band are local or semi-local, and therefore you need high angle radiation. I would suggest that a minimum height above ground should be around about 2 to 3 metres. Two to three metres will get you off the ground, you'll get the effect that we're looking for, and it is not too high. And if you have a quarter wave on 20 metres, that's a five metre vertical, give or take. Five metres plus three metres gives you eight metres. Eight metres is not unduly long. If it's still a little bit too high for you, you want to keep into that seven metre limit, then go down to say two metres above the ground, you'll still get good result compared with mounting the antenna on the ground. Now, I did mention in the previous video that there was a problem with the fiberglass pole because you couldn't use a metal support. Well, in this case you can, and the reason you can is because if you imagine it, the base of the antenna is simply a support and the vertical part of the antenna is going to be three or four meters above ground and the radials are going to come out at an angle, something like that. So the metal stake that you put in the ground to support your fiberglass pole is going to cause no ill effect at all. And if you get things right, you should be able to get a metal pole that you can put up inside the fiberglass pole. Now, fiberglass poles are quite handy because not only are they telescopic, but if you, if you work from the bottom, you can take out sections. So if you've got a fiberglass pole that is too long, what I suggest you do is you take out the thinnest sections, take them out until you've got a pole that's just the right length. Now, yes, you may be, you may be that you've got a pole that's you, the two sections you're not using, but so what? You can still put them back. So fiberglass pole, and if you get an alloy tube, say about uh, I don't know half a metre um, long or maybe a metre long, put it into the ground, you should with luck be able to plop your fiberglass pole over that and it'll be a beautiful support, nice clean lines, you don't need guys at all. So it only remains to construct the antenna, a single wire, a uh, vertical element from the top of the fiberglass pole of the appropriate length and uh, first of all, attach just one radial. 
Then, if you put an antenna analyzer in the feed point between the radial and the vertical, you can check for resonance. And there is a bit of interaction. So what I, what I suggest you do is, first of all, measure that vertical and get it approximately right, the approximate theoretical length it should be. Add the radial to it and you can then trim the radial to the required length in order to get a good VSWR. Then make a second radial of identical length and attach that. And what you want to do is you want to end up with the vertical and you want two radials, 180 degrees, in other words, opposite each other. Two radials like that and the vertical going up. And then you've got the basis for your DX antenna. That's all you need. Metal pole in the ground, plop your fiberglass pole on top of it, wire as, a, as, a, as the, uh, the radiator and a couple of radials as the sort of ground plane. And that will give you some decent DX and apart from the fiberglass pole, it's not going to cost you that much at all. The other thing I would say is do make a small coil um, using a ferrite core as, as a line isolator just at the point where you attach the coax to the, uh, to the feed point on the vertical. That will keep things nice and clean. So, so far what we've we got? We've got a fiberglass pole, we've got an elevated vertical, which is going to work extremely well, nice clean lines, self-supporting and it doesn't cost that much at all and if you want to take it down for any reason it's very very easy to take it down so can we multi-band it well yes you can in fact there's an interesting little article in radcom i think it was about, i think it was 1970 september 1970 I, I spotted it the other day actually and basically it is the idea where you can have more than one radi more than one radiator uh, element. In other words, instead of having a single five meter or five and a half meter um, length of wire going at the pole, you can have two or three. So you can cover 20, 15, and 10, as this particular article is showing. You you need these these elements spaced around about I don't know uh, 10 or 15 centimeters apart up the side of the pole. That gives you two or three bands and then you repeat the process on the radials you have one radial run going in one direction with three radials of different lengths with spacers and you have the other radial going in the opposite direction with spacers and again these radials will be tuned to match the band so in other words on 15 meters you can have a shorter uh, ra radiating element and, and shorter radials and on 10 meters even shorter now there will be some interaction uh, between those elements the the driven element and the radials but you need to check that um, with a vswr meter or preferably an antenna analyzer with a bit of juggling about it it's not that that difficult actually you'll end up with a tri-band antenna and that is a much better antenna than having one mounted on the ground. If you have it mounted on the ground, you've got to support the fiberglass pole. You can't use a metal support. You're going to have loads and loads of radials. If you bury them in the ground, it's a pain. If they're on top of the ground, you can't cut the lawn. It frankly it looks a bit of a mess. If you follow this method, you'll get a nice, clean, vertical antenna with far less radials, in fact you only, have, only need to have two radial runs and if you're doing a single band it's, it's, it's very very easy indeed. Give it a try, get yourself a fiberglass pole and I strongly suggest you get a decent one. The, spy, the German spider poles um, are really good and you'll see them on their websites, different sizes. And a bit of wire, wire cutters, you can't, what would you do without wire cutters? And you make yourself a DX antenna. And I can, I can honestly say it is a DX antenna because you'll get good low angle radiation. The antenna will see the sky and I guarantee you'll work the DX. Give it a try and let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.